Good day, folks. It's Tony Fortunato from The Technology Firm. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to use GOIP and Wireshark. Now, people bring this up all the time, and they feel it's a daunting task. It's, it's not that bad. So I'm going to walk you through it. I want to show you some tips and tricks along the way, uh, and hopefully um, get you going with it. So the first thing we need to do is set up Wireshark the way we like to see it. And I'll show you the way I do it. You don't need to do it this way. But the way I like to do it is I get rid of the bottom pane called the Packet Bytes. So I uncheck that. I also turn off the colors because right now the colors aren't helping me with anything and I find them extremely distracting. Now we're going to double check our IP header to make sure there is no geo IP information being provided because it shouldn't be, right, if you haven't set it up. But in case you're sharing a computer with somebody else or something like that, you might want to just see. You would see it somewhere near the bottom of this and we don't, right? So the first thing I need to do is go get these GOIP files, these database files. So what you do is you go to maxmind.com, you set up a free account, and you go to the download area. And please pay attention to the types of files you can download, because there are two types of files. The first one is going to be a CSV, comma separated value. You don't want that. right? You want these binary files, these MMDB files. That's what you want. And you're going to download them, they're gzip files. There's three of them. If you don't know which one you want, uh, just get all three of them. It's, they're not that big. And then you just unzip them, throw them in a folder. Please pay attention to where that folder is. Then we go back to Wireshark. Okay. So in Wireshark, we go to Edit, Preferences. Down here we have Name Resolution. And if you take a look here at the bottom, it says Max Mind Database Directories. Edit. So from here, I'm going to hit the plus button. There's the path. You can type it in manually or you can hit the browse button. It's entirely up to you how you want to deal with that. Okay. And okay. So here's the thing. This is where people get tripped up. Whenever you do these classes, people start freaking out because things aren't working out for them. There is no GOIP here. What did I do wrong? Blah, 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 blah. Well, two things. Two things. Number one, do you have an actual address that can be uh, geolocated? For example, these are private IP addresses, 10.44. Right, that's not a public address. Oh, so how do we get a filter so we can just see our public IPs? Well, that means we want to catch anything that goes through the router. That implies not local, right? In a big enough company, going through a router just means you go to a different floor. But in this case, it's a lab. I know we go through the router and we go to the internet. I know that. And the router is a ubiquity router, so it's probably going to be a ubiquity MAC address. There are a lot of ways to figure out the MAC address. I'm not going to get into that with you right now. I'm just going to go to statistics, endpoints, and there's Ethernet. I'm going to hit name resolution, and you'll see at the bottom here, there's ubiquity right here. So I'm going to just right click on it, applies a filter, selected, boom. And now we have a filter of just stuff we've gone through the router for. So you can see 176.103, that's obviously uh, out on the internet, it's a DNS, okay, now we know that. And now if we scroll down here at the bottom, look what it says, destination GOIP, oh, look at that, Cyprus, see that, Cyprus, country code, AS number, so on and so on and so on. Now, um, from this point on, people want to see that in my packet list here. They want to see the word Cyprus, the country, right? Easiest way to do that, just right click, and then we're going to apply that as a column right here. See that? Right there. Now, pay attention, it says destination GOIP. So when the destination is a private address, you don't see anything. So there's a few ways of dealing with this. Number one, you might not even care, so who cares? But if you are the kind of person that says, no, 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 I want to see every single line, I want to see what country it is, just so I don't miss anything, sure. Right click, and you go to edit, and you can see right here it says IP GOIP dot DST country. Well, you can just get rid of the DST. See that? Okay. Now we're good to go, right? So that's kind of cool. Now, if we want to take it a step further, the other things people like to do with it, now that we have this field that we can filter on, I can do a quick display filter and say, hey, if GOIP countries, United States, show me. Well, let's see what's happened. Boom. And there they are. So now we can see all the packets that was for the United States. In this case, it's good old Microsoft updates. So if you noticed, I did not turn on name resolution. I, I don't need that for GOIP. That's one of the myths and misconceptions out there. I do not need name resolution for GOIP to work. GOIP just needs those database files. As long as it's a public IP, 
and it's in that database, you're good to go. So right now, we've done all this and we might want to turn that on. So I go to edit, whoops, edit preferences. And this time we're gonna name resolution and I'm gonna turn on resolve network IP address, okay. And you will see that there you go, see that? Now we have name resolution along with the country because hand in hand, they tend to make a little bit more sense, right? Because the United States is a big country. You know, well, I don't know what that is. And this really does help. So there you go, folks. Hope that helped you out. Have a good day. Bye for now.